Okay, now we're inside Adobe Aero. Here's the home screen. What we're going to do though is hit the create new button on the bottom left. You can see how it's starting to add to the camera and to start placing things in. This texture floor is really helpful actually for recording a, a space. And then you can see how it's starting to get in perspective. And it's found the surface. I can set a surface anchor right here. And now you can see the surface has been created with the anchor in the middle. Hit plus and you go to Creative Cloud. Now this syncs up with your Creative Cloud account. So there's that Walgreens ad I created, the folder. And there's all the assets. So let's start with the LED screen. Just hit open. Let it load up. You can see in the top right that uh, loading circle. And once it's loaded, you can hit tap to place asset. I'll just tap on the screen. So it's too small, but that's really nice. You can just tap on that model. And with two fingers, you can just expand and scale it up. and use one finger to move it around in the scene, it'll stay in the ground plane that you created too, which is nice. So I'll place it right there. I'm gonna tap away. There it is. So let's walk around it and see how it looks. Oh. It's on the wrong side. That's easy. You can just re rotate it. So just like the model, go to the bottom. You can see rotate. I think it's X. Let me see. Oh, that's not it. Just hit reset and then use the Y and rotate it around. There we go. There it is. And tap away. Let's go to the next one. Let's do the Walgreens ad this time just to see how it looks. It'll take a little bit to uh, load. You can actually just tap the screen and place it, and it'll still be loading. There we go. Looks pretty sharp because it's a little bit hard to find. It looks nice and sharp, but it's an image file, so you can't scale it too large or it'll get pixelated. That's not too bad looking. It took some troubleshooting to get to this uh, sharpness of a file, but it really comes down to making as large of an image as you can in Photoshop without making the file size too large. You can see how it's the bottom of the document on the Photoshop is actually on the ground plane. I'd like to bring it down a little bit. So the way to bring things up and down in there is to use three fingers to scroll up and down. See the thing is though, by default, it won't let things go below the ground plane. And because that frame of the Photoshop file is right there, that's as far down as it can go. So I can just scale it down like that. That's a good spot. I'm going to move it down close to the LED screen. Scale it down some more. Move it inside there. So there it is inside there. So let's put it close. Yeah, put it about right there. Maybe like over there. Try that. Let's go to plus sign. Next thing. Let's do the call to action text. That'll load really quickly because it's a it's a nicely packaged up 3D file. Now this is a 3D this is actually a 3D file, so you can scale it up as large as you want and it won't get pixelated. Oh, 
that's the one thing that's nice about creating text in Illustrator to break brought into Photoshop and then extruded. There we go. So it's on the ground plane right now. It's going to move it up in space with three fingers and then move it back some more. Maybe scale it down. Let's see how it looks in relation to the Walgreens logo. Scale it down a little bit. And you can use two fingers to rotate too. There we go. And let's add the headline. There it is. Select it. Scale it up. I'm going to raise it up off the ground first, but then scale it. So you can move it back in 3D space from that perspective too, which is nice. So put it through the screen and make sure it's right there. And then, yeah, put it a little bit just in front of the screen. There's that shadow too at the bottom just to give you an idea of where it is in 3D space. I'm just going to place it some more and scale it up, move it. Now you can use two fingers to rotate on the y-axis as well. And there it is. Just place it in the side like that. See what it looks like. So the next thing I want to do is have an interaction to this AR experience. And I want to, what I want to do is select that LED screen and create an interaction there. So I'll select that. Go down to the bottom and you can see there's behaviors button. And if I click that and add a trigger, and you have these three options, either at the start of the experience or when you tap on it or when you enter it into a proximity that you set. I want to do a tap. And then I'm going to set an action. And you can, if you click on that action, you can see these different animations and pre-built things you can do with an object. At the very bottom, though, that's really cool, is open URL. And so I'm going to tap that. I'm going to actually paste in the URL for the photos.walgreen.com URL. So I'm going to go into Safari, go there and then copy that URL. There it is. Go back to arrow and then paste it. Hit the check button and there we go. So now it was still at edit in the top left as you can see. We need to go to the preview mode. You can see there's a record button on the right. I can either is there a video or I can record pictures too. And I can also package it up as an AR experience too. So just to test it, now that we're in preview mode, I'm going to click on the LED screen and see what happens. There we go. Great. It sends you right to the URL. And there it is. There's an AR experience. I'm going to record a quick video. Just a my experience. That's great. So there we go. That's how you use Adobe Arrow and Adobe Dimension to put together uh, really high fidelity AR experiences without any coding. Enjoy!